So this is uh, from uh, a physiotherapist called uh, Mulligan, I believe. And this is a technique physios actually use to assess and uh, neck issues and also to help improve range of movement or motion. All right, so as you can do the sitting down, obviously, but I uh, just thought since we spend so much time sitting these days, we can go right into it. So drop your chin slightly, so as if you wanted to do a little double chin. And since I'm looking down, I don't have to try hard because it's already there. <laughs> and then, you know, you have your hands on either side and you're pulling forward slightly with the arms, even as you press back with the head. And this is already reactivating and reawakening some of these weak, but beleaguered teleporimena neck muscles, right? Find your breath here. So breathing freely. And notice if you're over-efforting, right? On ikana di perprostasia and do a little less. And then you're going to take the towel lower on your neck actually and drape your hands as if you're about to put on a, a little shawl. And then you're just going to keep steady with your left hand and pull a little bit with the right. And that's going to take your head to the opposite direction. And then you're going to pull with the left hand and you're going to return center. And you can coordinate this with the exhale so it's a little more fruitful and a little more closely aligned to our yoga practice. So use the exhale, pull with the right hand and the head naturally will turn. Now often what happens in life as in this practice, the brain gets in the way and the eyes want to direct the movement. So maybe quiet the eyes or close them. And notice if you're actively moving your head and let the head go. Now you can even try a little bit of small movement to let the head go. So you're pressing your head back as if you had a second towel at the back of the skull and you're pressing the arms down, just working a little bit with the right arm and then work with the left arm just a little bit, just turning. And most of us, good, you can let the arms and elbows relax, right? Shoulders can stay relaxed here. And most of us will have more easeful range of movement through one side versus the other. You can go a little faster than your breath or you can move with your breath. Relax the mouth and keep reconnecting to your feet. Good, and for those of you just coming in, we need a towel or a strap and welcome. Good, and then ah, right? you're gonna take your uh, towel to the base of the skull. It's sort of the occiput. It's the toinyakosko in Greek. All right, so just the base of your head and then the towel will come above the ears and we'll do a similar thing. We have a little more access to movement here breathing freely. Now, if you have a longer uh, belt or scarf, you can still relax the arms. If you have a short hand towel like I did, you know, they'll be a little more engaged. Okay? So take your left hand down and use the right arm to take the face over into a side bend now. So we're pulling down with the left arm. So take your left arm down and then you're pulling the right hand is directing a little bit of movement here, right? So the, this is a little bit of mobility and movement. We're not using force. We're coaxing, a l'opiagme. You know, then you can take it to the other side. So one hand comes down and then the cravata or gravata, and then the other hand will just, oh, right? And you know, you can spend 10 minutes doing this. I'm, I'm just giving you a few ideas and options. And if you have a lot of shoulder tension, this is probably a lot on the shoulders, especially if you, know, you haven't done any movement today. So this is a great one to do at the end of the day. Good, you can play with that. 
and stay. Take a few exhales. Right, exhaling through the mouth. Right, connects us to the parasympathetic response a little more. You can do both sides. Right, the rest and digest that we dedicated our immunity boost practice to yesterday. Good. Ah, great. And then take your arms forward and take your arms wide. So this is another really fabulous one. Right? Especially for any of us who have a computer or drive a car or watch TV or movies on the computer. So activate your arms, pull enthusiastically, drop your feet and sitting bones down and take the arms back. Inhale up and back. Right? I have a whole video, I think it's about 25 minutes on this type of shoulder release work on uh, YouTube that's publicly available. Now notice if your elbows are bending and keep the arms strong here, as if you could break your strap in half. And Valentin would be like, yeah, I am cracking my whip. Right? Good, and then just to mix it up a bit, some of the super useful, amazing movement we'll be exploring in the workshop today is the movement of the shoulder blades. So. For the next time you go back, bend the elbows, keep pulling back. Now there's a tendency to do a sort of hyperlordotic type thing here. So pull in slightly, tailbone drops, and then inhale, reach it up. Exhale, rounding your spine, think cat and cow in yoga. So big rounding, drop your chin. Press through the feet, inhale up. Exhale, strong arms, bend the elbows. And again, notice if there's that propulsion and minimize it. Inhale up, exhale round and drop. Spread the shoulder blades apart. Inhale up, exhale, pull in, contain. Let's do one more. Inhale up and you know, we basically wanna do these until we fatigue. So for a lot of us, you know, eight or 10 would be good. Okay. But because we're going to work within this framework in different variations, I'm okay doing a little bit less. Okay. Exhale. Beautiful. Last one. Slow it down a little bit. Do uh, one or two more. We'll go ahead and uh, let the latecomers come in. And mute all. Oh. Great. And then take a moment and pause right where it gets a little sticky. Right? And then strong arms, move the chin back as if again you wanted to do that a little bit of a double chin, or as if you were pressing, if you had four hands like a Hindu deity, you'd be pressing the skull back instead of letting it drop forward. Take one more breath here. And slowly release. You can shake it out, shake out the wrists. We'll take a few rotations with the shoulders, which is also fabulous to do. So uh, just for the next 10 minutes or so, we're gonna do a little mini sequence that you can incorporate right into your day. Uh, you can use the strap, you can start with that. Um, but basically, a couple of things that we want to do is to start to retrain the back muscles, especially the upper back and the neck, and to open the front body. So we're going to focus a little bit on strengthening and reconnecting the muscles that support the work of the neck to support the head. Our head weighs five or six kilos, you know. So, and you know, especially as we get sucked into our technology for so many of us, not just as we age, but even teenagers these days, our head drops forward of the shoulders. You know, the ideal proportion would be the earlobe or the voche to the middle of your uh, sort, sort of uh, uh, <laughs> of your uh, sort of bicep and shoulder. And most of us come forward. And so with every few um, degrees that the head comes forward, we get a lot more pressure on the inter intervertebral discs. So we do constantly want to keep pushing back. So chin tucks are one of the super amazing easy ways that you can do that. So the chin tuck is very simply 
moving the head back again creating a little bit of that double chin some of us don't have to work so hard for that right and then you take you can take one finger just as a frame of reference right and then you just press back and as you press back you might find that you can take it further back and then you move back and forward a little think of a turtle moving and then you can again you can move a little slower you can use your breath pressing back yes this is my absolute worst angle just in case anyone wondered. and then you can also go forward and back but because we're not we are forward if we have to choose one we'll choose back you can also use a book and i actually do have a youtube video where we use a book to create that compensatory um, integration and activation of the uh, muscles but for now just do a few more chin cuffs this is something you can just do good drop your chin make sure you're no no drop your chin helena and a couple of others chin drops as you press back i'm, I'm sorry i can't see you all and i'm sorry i just called you out <laughs> but uh, we do the best we can and you know we'll do an in-person workshop as well let's do three more and we'll admit good and then take a moment take a few rotations through the shoulders you can walk around your space for a moment just feeling things out and then you'll need to be by a wall for the next one and if you don't have a wall it's not the end of the world but um they're, they're called wall angels and it's useful to have the wall as a reference right so you want to take your sacrum right at the wall the heels can be away from the wall and but nearby sacrum shoulder blades and head move back so once again we are working with a similar action wherein we're activating those muscles at the back so even just drawing the shoulder blades in and pressing the skull back creating a little bit of that double chin once again so the chin drops is reactivating the curve through the cervical spine which we want right what happens when the head draws forward is it flattens the curve and i know that flattening the curve is something that's really in fashion these corona days but when it comes to the curves in the spine we want them intact All right so pressing your head back so this is part one and this is already a lot heels close to the wall then you're going to take your hands out into a goal post position all right so the elbows it can be like a w all right it can be at 90 doesn't really matter before you do anything notice if your belly is just kind of popping open and you're coming into a hyperlobotic state and drop the tailbone and maybe even engage your front ribs a bit so you're still breathing fully and you can access the back of the lungs press your head back and then snow angels or wall angels as promised and you keep the elbows as they are start to lift on the inhale and lower on the exhale right? and move your wrist back and try to keep your wrist and even your fingers like your fingernails on the wall so your movement might be quite small to start so know that you're doing plenty that you're really doing something very positive for your posture your overall posture as well as neck issues right so and then if you you know if you have a little bit more range of movement and you can keep your wrists and fingers on the wall maybe you start to come towards like a little teapot or diamond shape maybe the middle fingers can meet all right so i would suggest maybe 10 of these but really if this is impossible and exhausting take a break shake it out and then maybe do three more like in general with this type of thing we want to do uh look to what's called failure or where we start to lose the alignment like your hands might be coming off or your elbows all right 
And then you do one or two more, maintaining as best you can the initial alignment, and then that's plenty. So maybe do two more if you can handle it. And that's, that's fantastic. If you can do this just for maintenance, it's a really effective tool. Like it's, for me, it's like my, one of my number one tools.